Okay, so let's look at number six. It says, find the exact value of the trigonometric functions. When you see these two words right here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a small little portion of uh, the unit circle. So you can either do this with unit circle or you can do it by using the QRST method with a reference triangle. I'm going to do both um, amongst all these three. Now let's look at the first one. So the sine of 120, I know that the sine of an angle is talking about the y value. This is with a unit circle interpretation. So all I need to do is find where does 120 exist? So I'll travel 90 degrees plus another 130, or sorry, plus another 30 degrees, will give me right here at this point. And from the unit circle I have memorized, I know this is going to be 3, 2, 1, so that's 1 half. And then back down with the y's, 3, 2, 1. Everything is over 2, square with the top. And then make sure that I have the positive and negative signs where they're supposed to go. A negative x, positive y, because it's in quadrant 2. And all I care about is what is the y value at this point? So my answer is going to be root 3 over 2. That's my answer for part A. Now, part B, I'm going to use the QRST method. It is similar to the unit circle. Um, let's first find where 225 degrees would exist. So let's travel around the circle. We have 90 degrees. We have 180 degrees. So 180 means we would need to travel an additional 45 degrees in order to get to 225. So we have this 30, this 45, and that 60 reference triangle, and we can know that our point is going to be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, with a negative x and a negative y. So with this in mind, this point isn't really required if I want to do a QRST method. All I would do is know that I'm going to end here at 225 and I would build a small little reference triangle right there. So let me enlarge this reference triangle as far as here's theta and here's theta. Now because I know it's 45 degrees right here I know this is x, x, x root 2 I could do um, a cosine, which is going to be an x over r kind of interpretation. So cosine is x over r, and our x value, we're going to say over here, is x. And the r value is x root 2. So this is my answer, but I have to simplify it. I have to reduce x's so that I get 1 over root 2. And I also have to rationalize the denominator in order to get a root 2 over 2. And the only thing that I'll say is because it is in quadrant 3, it's going to have a negative x positive y value. So this would be um, actually a negative x negative y value because it's in quadrant 3. So it would be a negative x and a negative y. So when I did it over here, it would be a negative x negative y so that the cosine is looking at just the um, oops, just the x value being negative. So right here, just a reminder, r is always positive. So I would get a negative over a positive. So let me highlight that as I go. Negative over a positive. So my answer should have a negative in it. So I get this negative root 2 over 2. So that's the QRST method. I'm going to only show that amongst these three examples, just with part B. Okay. If I did the unit circle with part B, all I would need to know is cosine is the x value. Because the radius is 1. It doesn't matter as far as that goes, as far as knowing this x over r. The radius is 1. x over 1 just means x, just the x value. So looking at that, the x value at that point 
the answer would be negative root 2 over 2. A lot easier and faster to get to the answer, but you have to know your unit circle. All right, so let's do our last one. Our last one we're going to do with unit circle interpretation. And we're going to find the angle known as negative 150 degrees. So this time we're going to travel the other direction. So there's negative 90. Then we're going to go in an additional negative 60 degrees. So that we get to a negative 150. And this is 60, 45, and that 30 if you will. So looking at this, we need a point right there. So we'll have root 3 over 2, which is negative, because it's in the third quadrant. And then a, another negative 1 half. And tangent is looking for the y over the x. Otherwise, the y value over the x value. Now, this already, some of you might be cringing if you make this into a fraction, like on top of, uh, like a vertical fraction, but if I wrote it as negative one half divided by negative root three over two, fifth grade tells me I can keep, change, flip this, and then I can cancel out the twos, because they cancel out to a form of one. I can cancel out the two negatives, which become positive, and I'm left with 1 over root 3. And yes, if I have a square root in the denominator, I need to rationalize it. Where this would become 3, and the top would become root 3. So my answer here would be root 3 over 